Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love. And God has blessings for us. He's looking out for us. No matter what goes on in this day and age, no matter what happens with the government, no matter what happens around us, God's got us in the palm of his hands. And I am right now getting ready to read to you Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42, starting at verse 5. Thus saith God the Lord, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, He that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein, I the Lord have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles to open the blind eyes to bring out the prisoners from the prison and to them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name and my glory will I not give to another neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise from the end of the earth. Ye that go down to the sea and all that are therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice. The villages that <clears throat> Kedar doth inhabit, let the inhabitants of the rock sing. <laughs> let them shout from the tops of the mountains. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. Mm. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have long holden my peace. I have been still and restrained myself. Now will I cry. Like a travailing woman, I will destroy and devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs. And I will make the rivers islands and I will dry up the pools. Mm. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. Wow. Uh, let me stop there for a minute, y'all. You know, one of the things that I love about God is that when we go through our different challenges in life, no matter what we don't understand, no matter what we don't get, and no matter what does not compute, all we have to do is ask God for answers. And all of a sudden, our understanding is opened up. Our eyes are open. Our ears are open. We hear. We, we perceive. We understand. We get it. We grasp it. But the sad part is how many people don't care to get that enlightenment from God. How many people will go to a tree? How many people will spend money on crystals and try to get information there instead of going to the God that created it all? He's the one who knows. He knows all. He sees all. He hears all. And everything you don't even understand about yourself, God does because he created us. He knows our strengths. He knows our weaknesses. Every gift we have, every ability and talent came from God himself. So there is nothing hidden to him. And there is no help we need that he can't supply. The hardest part for us is trusting him. I don't know. I Well, let me not say I don't know why, because I get it. If you only believe in him, but you have never encountered him, it makes it harder to trust him. You can only trust what you know. You can only trust what you have proven. 
And many of us don't prove God because we don't lean to him. We lean to our own understanding. We don't acknowledge him in all our ways, so he doesn't direct all our paths. And we don't get the help that's rightly available for us because we're too busy trusting in our own devices with our little pea brains. Isn't that funny? So we miss out on a lot of help. We miss out on a lot of his rescue missions in our lives. We don't get to see all that he's able to do, all of the difficulties that he's able to make easier for us because we're too busy leaning on our own. We're depending on our own little pea brains and we don't ask him for help and then wait for him to come through. If he takes one minute too long, one day too long, one week too long, we're on it. We got this. And the sad part is we don't. So I just encourage all to trust God. He will make your life so much easier. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. Our burdens are heavy, baby. And we need to lay all that on him. When the Bible says casting all your care on him because he cares for us, that's what you need to do. Like playing hot potato. You pass that baby on to him before it burns your hands. Let's try to learn to trust in him, you guys. Let's seek the Lord with all our heart. Get into the word. Find out all the different ways he has rescued his own. And the more you read, the more you see of his capabilities. The more you see of his capabilities, the stronger your faith. The stronger your faith, the more you ask for and the longer you're, re- you're willing to wait for him to come through for you in those areas where you just cannot bring things about for yourself. Another scripture I want to read <clears throat> is Isaiah chapter 4. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 3. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy. Even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. And the Lord shall create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and a smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For upon all glory shall be a defense. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and for a covert from storm and from rain. See, what we don't realize is all of the problems that blow, the winds of adversity will blow in problems, will blow in challenges, will blow in all types of resisting demons. But what we forget is that God can handle it all. Even when we can't handle any of it, God can. When we don't have the answers, God does. When we don't have the strength, God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. So understand who God is in your problems. Understand who God is in your challenges. Understand who God is in those areas where you can't get the help, those areas where the solution is not within reach. God can bring a solution within reach where there is none. That's what his word means when he says, I will make a way where there is no way. That's what his word means when he says he can do the impossible with God, all things are possible. Let me share this quick uh, experience. Why we need to ask at every turn, at every given moment, at every little ugly thing that rears its, its head in our lives. 
when when the Lord had me take over Micho's hair salon in Altadena, I remember one day I came to work, I did my customers, and I was leaving early that day. And as soon as I got home, I come home to a phone call. My phone rings. As soon as I get in the door, Pat, the sinks are stopped up. And I'm upset. I'm like, what? What? How could this happen? <laughs> so rather than have a hissy fit, I literally cried out to God, Lord, I need your help now. And as soon as I said that, the thought popped in my head. Call Ray Pfeiffer. And I said, Ray, he's never around. How am I going to reach him? But I called him. Matter of fact, I called his mother. And I asked Gladys Jackson if she could find him for me. And she gave him a call and he called me right back. And the surprise was that he was there. The second surprise was he was right in the neighborhood of the hardware store. He said, oh, I know what to do. I'll just go on and get a, a little portable snake. So he buys a little portable snake, comes over to the salon. This was all done in about seven minutes because as soon as I hung up from him, I did a beeline back to the shop. And we were both there about the same time. He goes right to the outer wall, unscrews this big giant bolt. And there's the pipe right there. He stuck that little $15 snake in that pipe. And he twirled it around and out came this long string of hair. The problem was solved in less than 10 minutes from the moment it reared its ugly head. God made a way where there was no way. He did not want me to reimburse him for the snake. He did not charge me for going in and solving the problem. The problem was solved at no cost to me and only with a delay of 10 minutes. And everybody was able to resume taking care of their customers. Problem solved because I asked God for help. Because I asked God for help, a name popped in my head. And when I followed through with what God told me to do, the problem was solved. 10 minutes flat, 10 minutes flat, y'all. What I'm trying to say to you is life and the answers to its problems can be resolved so much quicker when we cast all our cares on him because he cares for us. Now, what I want to share with you is life can be easy, or life can be hard. And I know for a fact from experience that God makes life so much easier because when there's a need, when your back is up against the wall, God knows how to, he already sees the problem coming a mile away. He already has all the players in place. He has the equipment in place. And when he has the equipment in place, he knows. He's got the answer. He knows how the problem's going to be solved before you even know there's going to be a problem. Do you hear me? He already knows that. So recognize that God is able. He knows exactly how to handle, exactly how to provide exactly how to bring about all the answers you need when you need them. Trust in him. He's got you. He's got all the miracles you need, y'all. So I say all that to say he is due to trust, as the old folks used to say in church. <laughs> Now we're going to go to Luke chapter 7 and we're done. Luke chapter 7, 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city 
which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at the feet, at his feet behind him, weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now, when the Pharisees, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which one of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with tears and wiped them with her hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou did not anoint, but this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. Wow. Now let me stop right there. God not only knows how to come through and handle the vicissitudes of life. He not only knows how to come and rescue you out of your, uh, <clears throat> out of your pit of discouragement. He not only knows how to solve your problems and provide the needs that you cannot find anywhere. He also knows your heart. He knows from whence you came. He knows from whence I came. He knows all of the mess we made of our lives. He knows the sins, every single one of them. Sins of commission, sins of omission. He also knows the sins of your heart, the sins of your thought life, the little comments and the little snide remarks you make about other people. He knows the attitudes that nobody else sees but him. Not even you at times. He knows it before you realize it's there. But no matter what he knows about us, he is merciful. He is of tender mercies. He's kind. He's patient. He's long-suffering. He is an understanding high priest. And he's approachable at all times. What I ask you is, are you trusting him with your attitudes? Are you trusting him with those hidden feelings of, I don't like her and I don't like him? Are you trusting him with your pride, knowing that you don't like to receive correction, resenting it, not welcoming it, but everybody knows you need the help but you? What are you doing? When you need help and God sends a person to give you words that you may not want to hear, what are you doing when someone is there to lend a helping hand, but you feel like you are too qualified to need their help? Thank you, but don't, but no thank you. See, 
God knows those that are prideful and he knows those that are humble. That woman was humble. She was humbled by her own sins, by her own shortcomings, by her own weaknesses. But some of us don't get help because we don't want it. And the reason we don't want it is because we're too prideful to receive it. We don't even want to hear anybody say we need help. We don't want to hear anybody say we need to learn more about this, that, or the other. Because we have arrived in our minds, I. And that pride will be your biggest downfall. You have to learn to be able to call on God for help. Be willing to admit to yourself, you need help. See, the people, if you go to the, to the prison house and you deal with the inmates, you don't get an argument from them. When, they t when you tell them that their life has turned out to be a mess, they're the first to admit it. They have been forgiven for much. And some of those inmates will be the first one to lay down their lives for you when you turn your nose up at them when they see your life is at stake. They're liable to still lay down their life for you knowing good and well how low you think of them because they've been forgiven much. They love much. But when in your own mind's eye, you have been forgiven for little, that may not be true, but that's the way you're going to see it because that's all your pride's going to allow. Then guess what, baby? I don't care how much scripture you know, your love is low. You love little because in your mind, you have been forgiven for little. And that's what I find, that people who know their shortcomings, people who recognize their weaknesses, who recognize their flaws, who recognize their fallacies, they're the first ones to come to your rescue. They're the first ones to love you with all, your, with all their might. They will give you the shirt off their back and the shoes off their feet because that's the kind of love their hearts are full of. But many of you who haven't been forgiven much in your mind's eye, you love little. As much as you want to believe you love much, honestly, you love little. And that's the thing that we have to ask God for. Two main things. Help me to trust you. Help me to know you enough to trust you. And help me to love. Show me how to love in the true meaning of the word. Teach me to sacrifice, expecting nothing in return. I want to give my life away, becoming more like you each and every day. My words are not enough. Lord, show me how to love. God bless you. I hope that that helps a little bit. We are done.